you have kids at this point, school is not in session. During this time, this is their midterm week, obviously. They were not taking any midterms because school wasn't in session. Um, and then you have these girls um, who are sitting on the sidewalk. And a lot of them, I mean, you can even tell by their face expression. It was either exhausted or wondering, you know, the one girl here all the way on, it would be this one right here, she, the one in the red sweater, she said, I hope that this ends up, you know, I hope that all this will be successful. Like, I hope that we get something out of it. And I don't want to go home and realize that none of this was successful and that we didn't get what I want. And she goes, every day I pray that something changes and so that the people don't feel discouraged. She's like, I'm afraid of, at the end of the day after this revolution, that people will go home dis discouraged. And she's like, I really wish that Mubarak would like step down. Um, and this is just one of the, one of them had said, you know, may the bloodshed be worth uh, generations of freedom and democracy to come. You know, um, we as uh, liberation fighters don't need violence to be heard. And that was the message. They wanted the international world to know that they didn't need violence. Um, and this is another kid and the Mubarak regime. He actually drew out this poster. I spoke to his mom. He was like, you know, I want to hold a poster. I want to make my own poster. And it's just amazing to see kids of all, you know, all age range. They, they all wanted to be a part of this. Even if they didn't quite understand what it is that we were protesting, they knew that my family and Egyptians didn't like Mubarak, so I didn't either. There must be a reason why all these millions are standing out here. And so he made a, a poster. Uh, he was nice. He didn't interrogate me. He was like, yeah, you can take my picture. Um, and here you have a family. And this woman, I mean, these women camped out. And the only time they went back home was for food. And if they could get food from anywhere else, they, they would. But they, they made a point to stay out here. And I asked her, I was like, you know, it's amazing. Most people wouldn't expect women or families or children to camp out here with their entire infants and, and children. And she said, I want my children to remember this. And they're only going to remember it if they feel like they're an active agent in this, in this revolution. And she said, if they're sitting out here and they're watching this, they're never going to forget it. Perhaps maybe they'll forget if they're at home watching this on TV, you know, passing in and out of the living room. But this way they're going to remember. Um, and I thought that was pretty inspiring. Um, and then here, this is just during the morning uh, when they're continuing. Every night I would go to sleep and I would hear, you know, al shab yuri taqir al nizam And it just, it just always, and it's basically, you know, the people are calling for change in the system. And this was constant. Uh, women would cry. Even men would start tearing from how much they, they were protesting. And no one looked at them like they were crazy, but you, your heart went out to them because each one had a different story. Each one somehow dealt with you know, the corruption of the government or, or police brutality. Um, these were other men who like, traveled like four hours to get to, to sleep in Tahrir Square just because they wanted to be a part of this. Um, and, and as you can see, tents were out there. People were like, really camping out. Uh, this is just another picture of the um, of the protest demonstrations in the morning. I don't know if you can see, but all the way on the on the top, where the highest flag that you can see, pretty much all the way up here. This is actually someone. I don't know how he got up on that pole because it's like really high and it's just like a metal pole. I have no idea how he got up there, but he was sitting up there. Um, I, I I remember looking at him and saying, "Well, how did he get there? Like, there's a ladder, but then I didn't see anything around there, so." Um, and then this man uh, with, his, uh, with his Egyptian flag. Um, this is just another picture of, just to give you a sense, and this is just one little corner. It, it was like widespread. Um, let's see. This is just another picture of protesters from the side of the Hearst Square. So this is just on one end where the tanks are. And there were tanks everywhere, especially during this time. Um, so just to move forward, this is just a picture. Some of the, this man was actually homeless and he was protesting um, in Tahrir Square. These are people who were t tenting out. Um, this is actually the museum where looters went in, and uh, this is the museum where they said that there were, you know, the mummies and whatnot. So this is where the looters came out and they attacked first there. They burned cars to prevent looters from coming here, so they set them on fire. And these were women. And I, the reason why I took a picture of them is to pretty much show you that there were people from all spectrums there during this revolution. Uh, and so, just another kid here. Um, just to wrap it up, because uh, I definitely ran out of time. So as of uh, on February 11th, which they called the day of departures, when Mubarak didn't even have the guts himself to face his people and to tell them, I'm sorry. Instead, he sent his uh, appointed vice president, which, by the way, pissed off the protesters even more, um, by appointing a vice president after 30-something years. Um, and so with that, I'll just say that the, the media played such a big role. 
and Facebook, I know it sounds ridiculous, but social media played the biggest role. And I know people are like, don't attribute social media to this revolution. It was all the people. But a part of it was that they were able to network. And although the government cut off all internet connection and all telephone connection during this during this revolution, they still somehow were able to connect with the international world. Uh, I remember the media only said that there were 840 deaths and 6,000 injured, which I'm sure is underreported. Um, and so on that day, uh, Omar Saliman came out and said that the president resigned. And when he resigned, it was during uh, a prayer. And people were so steadfast in their prayer that they heard people like screaming around them. And they didn't want to leave the prayer. And as soon as they left, they didn't even have to ask what happened. They just started celebrating. They're like, that's it. He's gone. We know he's gone. And granted, he, he did leave on February 11th. I will say this much that I will never forget this. And although I remember sleeping at night and hearing gunshots just, you know, from looters or just people screaming, I don't regret it. And I, re I feel like there was a reason why I went there and I stayed. And... I'm just really happy to be back and be able to share this experience with everyone. And when people ask me um, if you can explain your experience in one word, I would, I would say ignited. Because there's so much that I want to do now. I mean, when you witness a revolution, it, it's, there's no words to express it other than the fact that at this point you feel like the people can do anything. And, and if anyone ever underestimates the will of a people, then clearly they are mistaken because they are not following the revolutions that are happening right now. Um, so I think my time is definitely up. I thank you guys for listening to me uh, with my <laughs> Thank you.